everyone, this is another face tracker for Blender tutorial by Keen Tools. Today, we're going to do facial mockup in this shot to add some tattoos and learn how to use different types of masks in order to get a stable face track. So let's get right into it. Here we are in Blender. Let's see the sidebar, open face tracker, load our footage. It's already analyzed, so let's click new next to the head input in order to generate a new head mesh. This frame looks like a good reference to start with, so let's just press take snapshot. We're not gonna need the neck, so we can disable it in just a few clicks. You see that face tracker has already detected the face and automatically matched the mesh to it. Let's take another snapshot with a different view. Click auto align and do some manual adjustments. You can drag the existing pins, delete them or create new ones, switching between the views until everything is lined up. You can add more snapshots like this or upload other photos. Pre-quarter views work best as they give you good enough information about the overall shape and some nuances as well. Let's also add a side view. Profiles are great for defining the exact shape of nose, mouth and chin. Also, in this shot, the actress is wearing sunglasses, so most of the time we can't see her eyes, but this view allows us to line up those as well. This is the result we have in 3D. Let's move on to tracking by pressing Start Pin Mode. Let's click Auto Align first and then line up the mesh to her face as close as we can using the pinpoints. Although most of the times this is all you need for a good track, if we press Track Forward now, we'll see the mesh wiggling as it goes along the clip. The reason why the track is unstable here is the wind that blows her hair, it falls in her face and that makes it hard for Face Tracker to follow it precisely. What we can do about it is use a surface mask to mask out certain parts of the mesh. So let's add a new workspace window, press tab to switch to edit mode, then basically draw the mask on the surface of our head mesh, create a new vertex group and assign this selection to that group. Then we'll go to the Masks tab on the Face Tracker panel and select it from the drop-down menu. We can see it now as this blue area on our head mesh and if we click Track Forward, this area will be excluded from tracking. And as you can see, it's going a lot better now, but still not 100% accurate. So if you see that the mesh is off, pause tracking, line up things that have slipped away and track on as usual. You can create as many masks as you need and use them on different ranges. For example, at this point the actress turns her head and so we have the same issue with hair again. So let's go to edit mode once more, draw another mask, create new vertex group, click the sign button, let's name it as mask 2, then go over to the masks tab and apply it. Note that we can only use one surface mask at a time. Let's do a bit more of lining up and then continue tracking. Now at this point she starts fixing her hair and that hand presents another problem for our tracking. But we can deal with it by means of a compositing mask. Let's go to the masking tab, select our clip, then go to add, circle, this creates a new mask layer for us. Now use the keys A and G to select and move the mask around. Place it on top of the hand, change its shape to cover it all and then press I or insert keyframe button to create a key for our mask. And then we're gonna go forward and move our mask along with the hand, change its shape, create a key every time we make changes until we cover every moment her hand touches her head. Over here is the frame range, it's set from 170 to 214, that's the range we want to apply our mask for. Let's go back to layout and select our new compositing mask in the masks tab on the face tracker main panel. Alright, so by using this combination of surface and compositing masks, we can get a very stable and accurate face track. Here's our final track. As you can see, the glasses did not affect it, so we didn't even have to do anything about it, which is cool. We can go over to shading and add a couple of tattoos now. We have a detailed tutorial on how to add tattoos and digital makeup with Face Track for Blender. Use the link in the description to check it out. Let's just give it a quick overview. So we've used an image texture node for every tattoo image. It's a PNG with an alpha channel, each mapped on the face with a texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Then we merged them with a series of mixed shader nodes and made the 3D head transparent using the holdout node. 
We also have a node that imitates skin texture for the tattoo images. Again, you can learn all the details in our tutorial on adding digital makeup. We can send it to render now. That's it, I hope you enjoyed it. Download Face Tracker for Blender from KingTools.io. Leave your comments down below, like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye bye.